Welcome to another Pass HC exam question videos. In this video, we're going to cover this question, which comes from the Regulating Substances chapter. What I'll do in a second, I'll read the actual question. Once I've read the question, you get about five seconds to pause the video. Once you've paused the video, attempt the question, and when you're ready, press play and I'll go over the actual answer itself. So I'll read the question itself first. It says, A, name one adaption in an Australian terrestrial plant that assists in minimizing water loss. That's with one mark, and I realized I wrote. No, I didn't. I didn't actually spell terrestrial wrong. That's correct. Uh, B. Explain why it's important for plants cells to control water loss. And that's worth two marks. C. Plant breeders have developed a new variety of terrestrial plants, which has one structure that appears to assist in water conservation in hot, dry environments. Design a first investigation that plant breeders could use to determine if the structure assists in water conservation. That's worth four marks. When you're ready, press pause, attempt the question, and then press play when you've attempted the question. Welcome back. So for this first one, it says, says name one adaptation, and it says an Australian terrestrial plant. The system minimizing water loss. So name an Australian plant, name plant, and name the adaptation or response. So name the adaptation. And I've chosen eucalyptus tree as a plant and the adaptation at the thick waxy cuticles. But you've also could have chosen, for example, spin effects and, and talked about the uh, curling um, leaves so that they try to reduce their surface area, or any of the other ones that we've covered or that you would have covered in class as well. So for question A, I just wrote the eucalyptus tree has, this is the, the actual strain terrestrial plant, has a thick waxy cuticle, that is the adaptation to prevent water loss from the surface of its leaf, and that's what it does. And that gets you a quick mark for this one. Now B was explain why it's important for plant cells to control water loss. And remember, both plant cells and animal cells have to conserve or maintain a constant level of water. And then there were a couple of reasons why. And there were two main reasons, which was that you have to have um, water for chemical reactions. So water was important for chemical reactions, as water is a solvent for all these chemical reactions. And the other one was to keep a good structure. So if it's too low, it shrivels up. And if it's too high, then it becomes... Um, overhydrated in my burst, so we want to keep that isotonic environment to make sure we have a good cell structure. A good cell structure. So these are the two reasons why we need to maintain optimum water levels in cells, and that is for both for plants and for animal cells. So what I wrote is water plays an important role as a solvent for chemical reactions in plant cells. This is the role it plays when it comes to um, chemical reactions in plant cells. And this enables chemical reactions to occur. So without water, chemical reactions wouldn't occur. So if we have an, with an inadequate amount of water, the cell function would be compromised. So if we don't have enough, then obviously the cell itself wouldn't work properly anymore. So that's one reason why we need to make sure we have a normal constant level of water in our cells to make sure our chemical reactions can go ahead at a normal pace. And the other reason was Optimum water levels also need to be maintained to assure the correct turgid cell structure for plant cells. So that turgid refers to plant cells. They want to be that turgid um, variety. Animal cells don't have to be turgid, but plant cells do. So I just added that word just to have an extra word in there. If you didn't add that word, that would have been fine as well. But we have to make sure that, yeah, we have to correct that, have to maintain the correct cell structure. And too little water causes plants to shrivel and die whilst too much water causes cells to burst. So now we've said another reason why is to maintain that good cell structure. And given, given sort of um, observations of what happens when it's too little and when there's too much water as well. So this is one for each of these reasons we mentioned. And that's a two out of two mark question. And this last one was a, actually a skill that was testing. So this was testing if we can, this is a skill, not an actual exam service dot point. And this was seeing if we can set up investigations, first-hand first -hand investigations. So what we have to do is we have to obviously have 
a setup experiment, we have to have our control, which was that original plant, and then test that again. So test the control, the original plant, versus the new plant. That's one part of our experiment. We also got to make sure we keep quite a few of our variables the same. So keep variables constant. So for example, how much light they get or how much water they get should be the same for both the control and for new plants. So keep variables the same. We need something that we actually measure so we can compare it. So something that we measure. And then we need to have a conclusion of what happens and then what that tells us about the actual experiment. So we need to have conclusion as well. So these are the ones I'll cover for number four, design experiment. So first, what I wrote is we choose a numerous plants. This is to make sure we don't just choose one of each because the more we have, the more reliable our actual data will be. So numerous plants of both the, the new, more water resistant plant and the original plant. So we have lots of plants, lots of these types of both the new one and the original one. That's a step one. We choose that for step one. And step two was plants, plant the plants in a dry environment because that's where we're testing. So the plants will be planted in a dry environment. And what we do is we monitor the growth, uh, growth and the overall health for a period of weeks. So this is to make sure we can see if these certain new ones survive better than the old ones. That was point number two. And then three, we, we had, we showed that plants receive the same amount of sunlight and water. This was keeping those constant variables the same, which is really important when it comes to setting up experiments. Also, we may obviously made sure we had that measurable one. We, so we assessed the growth of all plants over the period of the experiment. This is what we actually will determine if the plant has better adaptions, is how much it will grow. And our conclusion is if after this period, so if the more growth and better overall health is observed for the new plant, then that can be viewed as evidence for the proposed improved water conservation adaptations. The reason why I said not proof but evidence is because in science that word proof is a quite a big word. We should usually always use the word evidence. So these are the points. So if you mentioned these most important points that we have to have a control and the uh, the one we're testing, so the new plant. If you ma make sure you mention that we have we keep our constant variables the same, so such as the sunlight exposure and water that the plants get. We have something that we measure. You mentioned that in experiments. In this case, we measured uh, growth of the actual plant. And then the conclusion was that we said that if one grows more than the other, that would suggest or would be evidence for it having better adaptations. So that would have been, so each of these would give you a mark. So that'd be four out of four. You wouldn't have had to have this exact experiment, but just the idea. So these four points that I mentioned earlier were the ones that you needed to include in the experiment. And where did these stop points come from? They come from, uh, first one comes from describe adaptations of a range of terrestrial Australian plant, plants that assist in minimizing water loss. So we mentioned earlier that the Australian one we mentioned was the eucalyptus, eucalyptus tree and their adaptation was a thick waxy cuticle. So that was question A comes directly from this sort of stop point. Question B, so explain why it's important for plant cells to control water loss comes from this stop point. Explain why the concentration of water and cells should be maintained within a narrow limit for optimal function. So that's basically yeah, B. So even though it's saying uh, about plant cells, but remember both plants and animal cells have the same f requirements, which is to keep that constant internal environment when it comes to water and other things. And C, again, this was not a dot point. C was just a skill that they're testing. They can also test skills and they're testing if you can like, design it proper experiment. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.